Hello, everybody. Our second speaker today, uh, Nicoletta, is going to talk about strongly scalar torsion geometry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much also for the kind of invitation to give this uh, series of lectures. Um, OK, so in these four lectures, I will try to give you an overview on uh, strong scalar with torsion, so for brevity SKT um, matrix, on complex manifolds. Okay, so the setting is complex non scalar geometry. Okay, so um, just let me start by giving you the plan of this uh, mini course. So the plan is the following. Okay, so first of all, today I will give you an introduction. So I need, today I will give you the main definitions and um, the, I will tell you the main properties of SKT manifolds, okay? And of course, we will see also a few examples of SKT manifolds. And if I have time, I will also try to describe a little bit the behavior of SKT matrix along small deformations of complex structures and also um, along blow-ups. And tomorrow, so in the second lecture, uh, I will describe the relations with other special structures, okay? So with other geometric structures. So in particular, I will talk the, about the relations between uh, SKT matrix and other special Hermitian matrix. And also we will see the relations with uh, symplectic structures. And in the third lecture, I will talk about SKT matrix on nil manifolds and sol manifolds. Uh, so nil manifolds and so manifolds, as you will as you will see, um, are uh, special um, manifolds constructed as portions of uh, special Lie groups, and um, so we will see on um, these classes of manifolds when SKT matrix exists, and why is that? Because we will see that um, uh, so SKT matrix will be a generalization of Kähler matrix. And a good source of examples of non killer manifolds is given by nil manifolds and sold manifolds. So that's why we will uh, you know, talk about SKT matrix on these special classes of manifolds. And finally, in the last lecture, we will see the relation between SKT matrix and special curvature properties. And so in particular, I will talk about bismuth killer like matrix. Okay, so this is the plan for the four lectures. Um, all right, so let me start from the beginning, okay? So with the introduction, so we will see what SKT metrics are. Okay, so the setting is complex geometry. So from now on, I will denote with MJ a complex manifold. Okay, so for me, a complex manifold is a pair given by a smooth manifold M, which has dimension, so real dimension of M is 2N. And J is a complex structure, which means that J is a 1 1 tensor, or if you want, is an endomorphism of the tangent bundle of M such that J squares to minus the identity. Actually, when you have an endomorphism of the tangent bundle whose square is minus the identity, so Essentially, it's behaving like the imaginary unit. Uh, we will call this uh, tensor um, an almost complex structure. So this is what an almost complex structure is. But we want this uh, uh, structure to be also integrable. So we have an additional condition that is the so-called integrability condition. that ensures that this tensor actually um, produces, let's say, locally um, 
holomorphic coordinates, okay? So essentially this tensor comes from a structure of complex manifold, which means that our manifold locally is modeled on CN. We have this holomorphic atlas. So when we change charts, we really have holomorphic mappings, okay? And so the integrability condition can be expressed in several ways. Um, so for us, for instance, this will mean that the Nihenoi tensor vanishes. So integrability condition for us means that if we take the Lie brackets of let's say x y plus j of the bracket of j x y plus j of the bracket of x j y minus the bracket of j x j y, this is equal zero for every vector field x and y. Okay, x and y are vector fields. Okay, so if you have a tensor, the squares to minus a one-one tensor, the squares to minus the identity and satisfies this condition, what you have is a complex structure on your manifold. Okay, so in particular, if you take the complexified tangent bundle, this splits. So and, and you take J acting on the complexified tangent bundle, you can split uh, you know your this bundle in two eigenbundles say T10 and T01, with respect to the two eigenvalues that you have for your complex uh, structure, because you have as eigenvalues I and minus I. And so you take the two um, eigenbundles. So you have this splitting. And so you can induce this splitting also on the dual space. And essentially what you get is that if you take complex value differential forms, so differential forms with values in C, actually this decomposes as the direct sum of the spaces of so-called PQ forms. So essentially what you have is that your J, your complex structure is inducing a B degree on the space of forms, okay? Okay, so the setting is this one, is complex geometry. So let me recall, what an Hermitian metric here is here, okay? So a Riemannian metric G on MJ is called Hermitian if G of JX, JY is equal to G of X, Y, okay? And this is again for every X, Y vector fields. Okay, so essentially J is like an isometry for the metric G. And once you have an Hermitian metric, you can actually associate a differential form of degree two, which I would call the fundamental form. So, the fundamental form omega associated to J and G. Okay, so J is the complex structure, G is the Hermitian metric. The fundamental form is the two form Um, defined in this way. So omega on X and Y is equal to G of JX, Y. Again, X and Y are vector fields, okay? So this is the definition. And it turns out that omega, according to the degradation, uh, to, sorry, to the B degree that we have here, is in fact a form of type one, one, so it has degree one, one. Equivalently, this just means that omega of X and Y is equal to omega of JX, JY. Okay, so this means that omega is a form of type one, one. And also omega is in fact positive, which means that omega of X, JX is positive. Okay, of course, for every x difference from zero. Okay, this is because it's defined using uh, the Riemannian metric G, the Hermitian metric G. 
Okay, so just a remark. So in fact, if we fix J, fix the complex structure J, we said, okay, so pick an Hermitian matrix. Actually, of course, Hermitian matrix always exists. Then we can construct the fundamental form omega. But in po the point is that it, um, we also have the vice versa. So when you have a real positive one one form, actually, you can reconstruct the Hermitian matrix G, okay, thanks to the formula that, you know, link that link the two uh, structures, okay? So in fact, sometimes I will call Hermitian matrix the form omega itself, okay? Um, all right, uh, so let me give you the first definition of special Hermitian matrix. That is the one of Keller, the, the definition of Keller matrix. So omega, so the matrix omega is called Keller. if omega is closed, okay, with respect to the exterior derivative, okay, D is just the exterior derivative. So in fact, what I'm saying is that this is a symplectic structure, okay? It's a non-degenerate closed two form. So it's a symplectic structure. And that's why sometimes people say that Keller geometry lies at the intersection of complex geometry, uh, Riemannian geometry, and symplectic geometry. Okay, because a Keller manifold is the datum of a smooth manifold, a complex structure, and Hermitian met a Riemannian metric G compatible with the complex structure J and the form omega. And it turns out that omega is a symplectic structure. Okay, so these are Keller manifolds. Okay, so um, of course the Keller condition is a very strong condition because um, you see um, it's, a, it's a very rigid condition somehow because we have these three different um, geometries. Uh, I mean, we have the interplay of these three different geometries, okay? And so in fact, for the re this reason, we have topological obstructions for the existence of Keller matrix, okay? Uh, for instance, if you have, uh, say, M, J, G, omega, a compact Keller manifold, then the even Betty numbers, so the dimension of the Durand homology groups of even degree, so the even Betty numbers are positive. And in fact, this is because you have a symplectic structure, but in fact, you have also that the odd Betty numbers are even. Okay, so you see you have obstructions for the topology of the manifold in order to admit um, a Keller metric. And also, let me also mention this fact that if the dimension of the manifold, so let me say the complex dimension of the manifold is two, so when you have a compact complex surface, actually there are topological characterization. Okay, so this follows from a series of results due to CU in the 83 and also Bukdal 99 and Lamarie with a different proof in the same year. So what I'm saying is that if you have a compact complex surface, I mean, M, it has to be compact in dimension two, okay? We have a Keller metric if and only if the first Betty number is even. So you have a topological characterization, okay? So that's why when it's, I mean, um, for me at least, uh, I mean, the existence of a Keller metric is a very strong condition for a complex manifold, okay? Okay, so in general, so in general, so, so now let's leave the Keller word. So in general, when you have an Hermitian manifold, 
So M, J, G, omega is an Hermitian manifold of, again, I mean, the real dimension of the manifold M is 2N. We can consider um, this operator, sometimes this is called a uh, Lefschetz operator, that take a form, takes a form and increases the degree by two. And this operator on a form alpha is defined just as omega wedge alpha. So it's the wedge product with the form omega. So omega is a two form. So you are increasing the degree by two, okay? Okay, so this is sometimes called Lefschetz operator. And since omega is a non-degenerate form, we have that, um, okay, so we have that. Um, if you take the operator L to the power N minus one, so you act with L and N minus one times from one forms to two N minus one forms, this is an isomorphism. One can prove that this is an isomorphism. So why I'm telling you this? Because this means that then there exists a form theta of degree one such that, let me show, let me see. So you take the differential D applied to omega n minus one here by omega n minus one, I mean omega wedge omega and so on wedge omega n minus one times. Okay, so this form have degree two n minus two. So you apply the differential. So this is a form of type two n minus one. But since this is an isomorphism, in particular, it's subjective. So there's, there exists a one form that I call theta, such that d omega n minus one is equal to ln minus one of theta. So in other words, since L, the operator L is just the multiplication by omega. So here, this is just omega, sorry, theta, wedge omega n minus one, okay? So what I'm saying is that, so let me rewrite this again, is that every time you have an emission metric and you compute d omega n minus one, this will be equal to theta wedge omega n minus one. Every time you have an emission metric. And theta is a one form, okay? So this form, has a name, so let me say definition. So the one form theta is called um, torsion one form. Or sometimes it's also called Lee form. And in fact, You can check that theta is actually equal to J D star of omega. Let me explain what the star is and what, what does it mean for J to act on forms, okay, on smooth forms. Okay, so first, what is this star? So the operator D star is the adjoint of D with respect to the product on uh, the L2 product on form. So this star is defined to be as minus star D star is an operator that takes, uh, let's say a P form and gives you a form of degree one less P minus one form. And star is the Hodge to star denotes the C linear Hodge star operator. 
So these operator star goes from PQ forms to N minus Q, N minus P forms. Okay, so N again is the complex dimension of your manifold and is defined saying that for form of suitable degree, alpha wedge star of beta bar, so the conjugate of beta is given by the product induced by the metric on, on, you know, on the dual, so on forms, times omega n over n factorial. Okay, so this is uh, our Hodge star operator. This star is defined in this way. So it's decreasing the degree. So omega over here has degree two. So this star of omega is a one form. And then we apply J. So there are different conventions for the action of J on smooth forms. So I will use this. So if let's say alpha is a K form on the manifold, for me, J of alpha acting on vector fields, uh, say X1, XK, is equal to minus one to the power k of alpha jx1 jxk. Okay, well, now j is acting on vector fields in the usual way. Or equivalently, I'm saying that if alpha, so a diff, an equivalent way is that if alpha is a PQ form, I'm saying that j of alpha. So if I have a specific B degree, J of alpha is equal to I to the power Q minus P of alpha, okay? Where PQ is the degree. So this is the action on J on forms. And so one can check that theta actually can be defined equivalently using this expression here or this other formula here, okay? So every time you have an Hermitian metric, you have this one form, the Lie form. Okay, so now let me move on. We will use this Lie form in the following. Uh, so now let me uh, talk a bit about um, connection, a fine con Hermitian connection. So again, the setting is complex junk. So MJ is a complex manifold. Okay. Again, the real dimension of M is 2N. Maybe sometimes I will forget to say this again, but the dimension for me will always be 2N unless it's stated otherwise, okay? And fix an emission metric. So G is emission metric. Then on a fine connection, Nabla on MJG is called permission if Nabla G is equal zero. So G is parallel with respect to the connection, okay? And also nabla j is zero. So also j is parallel with respect to the connection. So you see, you have this connection that is preserving the whole Hermitian structure. So both the metric and the complex structure. Careful that I'm not saying that not, I mean, I'm saying, I'm not saying anything on the torsion on the connection. Okay, so recall that the torsion of an emission connection, sorry, of a connection is defined in this way. So on vector fields, X and Y are vector fields. So T of X, Y is defined as nabla of X, Y minus nabla of Y, X minus the Lie bracket of X and Y, okay? So um, since, nabla g is equal to zero, so the metric is preserved, and Hermitian connection
is entirely determined by its torsion. Okay, so the tor this is the torsion. Okay, so in particular, what we have is the following proposition that is due to bismuth in 89, that is the following. So um, on a compact permission, Manifold MJG, there exists a unique permission connection let me call this uh, nabla with B over there because it's the related to bismuth. Okay, whose torsion is totally skew symmetric. Which means the following. Okay, so we have a unique emission connection with the following property. So if we define TB of x, y, z, where x, y, z are vector fields. This is g of t, b of x, y, comma, z. Okay, so t, b is the torsion. So this one is the torsion for the connection nabla b. Okay, so the torsion according to the definition you have now over there at the top of the slide, okay? So then you define this tensor here with three entries. And it turns out that this is a differential free form, so smooth free form. On M. Okay, so if you have an emission manifold, there exists a unique Hermitian connection whose torsion. So it's a three form, okay? It's totally symmetric, so it's a three form. Okay, so um, let me first do this remark because I'm assuming that in fact, as you can see that our connection has torsion, so it's not the levi chilita connection, of course. Okay, so in general, um, uh, Nabla B, so this connection that is called bismuth connection. So let me write it down. So this is, so this nabla B is called bismuth connection. Or sometimes in the literature, it's also called the Strominger connection, okay? Okay, so in general, nabla B, um, of course, it does not coincide with the Levi Civita connection. Okay, because it has torsion. Okay, so I'm not, it's not torsion free. Actually, I mean, the torsion has this very nice property that is totally skew symmetric. Okay. But what we have is that, of course, the business connection is related to the Levi-Civita connection by this formula. So G of nabla, let me say nabla B for the business connection, of nabla B x, y, z is equal to G of nabla, let me say, LC for the Levi-Civita connection. Okay, so this is the, stands for Levi Civita connection of X of X, Y, Z. Plus, we have an extra term 
that is the following is one and a half dc omega of x, y, z, where omega is the fundamental form. Okay, is the fundamental form of associated to the structure JG. And this operator that I called DC is by definition minus J minus one DJ, uh, yeah, DJ, sorry. Okay, so and this operator is acting on forms. Okay, so J is, is acting on forms using the formula we, we mentioned before. D is the exterior derivative, and here you have J minus one, okay? So it's a sort of complex conjugation for the exterior derivative. And in fact, one can check that in the integrable case, our J is a complex structure. This is equal to I del bar minus del, where I'm, let me recall you that del bar and del are the two components of the exterior derivative. Okay, the exterior derivative on forms splits as the sum of two other operators, del and del bar, where del goes from PQ forms to P plus one Q forms, and del bar is the conjugate operator. So it goes from PQ forms to A, P, Q plus one forms. Okay, and it turns out that the exterior derivative is the sum of these two differential operators, and DC can be also defined in this way. So you see um, by this formula over here, the Bismuth connection and the levi civita connection does not coincide. We have an extra term involving DC of omega. And in fact, let me also mention that what we have is that the torsion of the Bismuth connection thought as a three form, we said before, this is the theorem of bismuth, this is a three form, it's exactly equal to the C of omega. Okay, one can prove this, okay, we will not do it, but the torsion, it's exactly the C of omega, and this is a three form because omega is of degree two, and the C is, act, is increasing the degree because we have the exterior derivative, okay? So the bismuth connection and the levi civita connection do, do not coincide because we have this term that is related to the torsion of the connection, okay? So maybe some of you already thought about this, but um, so remark. So it follows from, okay, so let me put a star here for this formula. Okay, so the formula that relates the, with the bismuth and the levi civita connection. So it follows from this formula that number B coincide with nabla C. So the bismuth connection and the levi civita connection, you see, when do they coincide? They coincide when this C of omega is zero, right? When we don't have that term. So they coincide if and only if the C of omega is equal to zero. But what is the C of omega? The C of omega is minus J minus one DJ of omega. But J of omega is exactly equal to omega because we said at the beginning that omega is a one one form. So this is equal to minus J minus one D omega. But J is an isomorphism. So DC of omega equals zero is equivalent to say that omega is closed. The omega is zero, okay? Which means that omega is scalar. So you see um, the bismuth connection and the levi civita connection coincide when you're, if and only if the metric is scalar, okay? So they coincide only on killer manifolds. So the bismuth connection is interesting when you work 
with non-killer metrics, okay? Because in that case, really, it's giving you some new, it's a different object, okay? Also, uh, just a remark. So, a last remark before, before giving you the main definition of uh, this course. So, from Godushan, so the reference is a paper of Godushan in the 97, we have that. The connection Nabla B belongs to a one parameter family of, uh, let me say, canonical permission connections. So depending, so this parameter t, one minus, e, so this connection, let me say nabla t, depending on t, is one minus t over two of nabla c, I'm saying, I'm going to say what is nabla c, plus t over two of nabla b. So nabla b is the bismuth connection, t is a real parameter, and this nabla c is the so-called churn connection. That is another important Hermitian connection, uh, such that um, the one one part of the torsion is equal to zero. So it's another very special connection in complex geometry. And we have that, in fact, with Sean proof that we have a whole line of canonical Hermitian connection, and the bismuth con connection belongs to this line. Um, so why I'm talking about the bismuth connection? Well, let me say that, um, so um, Hermitian manifolds equipped with uh, the bismuth connection have been um, called by physicists. So they have been studied originally by physicists. So they have been called by them, uh, Kähler with torsions. Because you see, uh, sometimes um, the fundamental form was actually called also Kähler form, but it's a bit misleading because Kähler usually means that the fundamental form is closed. Okay, so it's a bit misleading. So, but anyway, so that's why we have the Kähler. The, but with torsion, because we saw that for the bismuth connection, the torsion is totally schismatic. Okay. So this motivates the following definition that is the definition finally of SKT metric. So, um, an Hermitian metric. Okay, sorry, it's not writing anymore. Just one second. I think I have some problems with the with the pen. I don't know. So let me. One second, let me close this and let me try again. Okay. So let me share the screen again. Okay. So um, on Hermitian metric, omega on a complex manifold, mj is called 
strong killer with torsion, So from now on, we will always say SKT. If the torsion of the bismuth connection is closed, okay, with respect to the serial derivative. So we said the torsion of the bismuth connection is a free form, and we are saying that it's closed. So that's why physicists talk about strong, um, in the other this term, strong Keller torsion, okay, because the torsion is closed. So Above, we said that uh, the torsion of the bismuth connection coincides with dc of omega. So this is equivalent to say that d dc omega is equal zero. But in fact, this is equivalent to say that um, del, del bar of omega is equal zero. Okay, because we said that D is equal to del plus del bar, DC is equal to I del, sorry, I del bar minus del. And if you use also the fact that del square equal del bar square equals zero, you get that you can do this by as a very easy exercise to show that DDC is equal to 2i del, uh, del del bar. Okay, so omega is del del bar closed. So that's why also this matrix, so this matrix, are also called pluriclosed. Okay, so in the literature, you can find this matrix under the name of SKT matrix or pluriclosed matrix, okay? Because um, you see from this definition, they are called pluriclosed. Um, okay, so this is the, so the main object of this, uh, of this series of lectures, so the, the SKT matrix. So first remark, that is the obvious one, if omega is scalar, then, uh, which means omega is closed, then it is SKT, omega is SKT. Okay, because omega is DDC of omega. Sorry, the SKT condition is DDC of omega, which, well, if you want, you can see this because the NDC anti-commute, you can also check that. This is minus DCD of omega, but if omega is closed, this is zero, okay? So Keller matrix are SKT, so this is a natural generalization of the Keller condition. Um, well, I'm not um, uh, very familiar with physics, but let me just say that these SKT matrix were actually introduced in physics uh, in the context of uh, type two string theory, and two, um, two dimensional supersymmetric sigma models, okay? But I'm not familiar with this uh, topic, so I will not talk about this, okay? Okay, so we have this SKT matrix, uh, in particular, Keller matrix, our SKT. Um, so before giving you an example, let me say the following. Let me give you another definition of special Hermitian matrix that is the definition of Godushon matrix. So this uh, is the following definition. So an Hermitian matrix, so let's say omega Hermitian matrix on a complex manifold MJ is called Godushon. If del del bar of omega n minus one is equal to zero. Okay, you take omega and omega n minus one time, so the wedge product of omega with itself n minus one time, and you say that this is del del bar close. Or equivalently, DDC of omega n minus one is equal to zero. 
Okay, so this is the definition of Godushan metric. Uh, they were introduced by Godushan, and he called this metric um, standard metrics. Okay, but now everyone called this metric Godushan metric. Uh, okay, so notice that, sorry, Mark. Notice that omega is Godushan. If and only if this star of theta equals zero. So if you remember, theta was the leaf form that we introduced at the beginning of this, uh, of this lecture. So we are saying that theta is co-closed. This star is the same operator that we mentioned before. Okay, and why is that? Well, because indeed, it's an easy computation to show this equivalence. So this star theta, is equal to the star of theta, but theta we said is j d star of omega, okay? But now the star is equal to minus star d star, and we have two d star in this expression, so the minus cancel. So we have star d star, then we have j, and then again we have star d star of omega. But since the, the metric is Hermitian, star and J, um, sorry, they commute. And so this is like having star D, let's say J, star square of D star of omega, because J and star commute. But now star square on forms of this degree, you can check it's minus one. So this is minus star of dj of d, and now I should put star omega, but star omega, let me just tell you that is equal to omega n minus one over n minus one factorial. So this is equal to omega n minus one over n minus one factorial. So you see, hence, this star theta equals zero, if and only if from this formula, we have if and only if dj of d omega n minus one equals zero because star gives an isomorphism, okay? But now this is equivalent to say that since j is also an isomorphism and dc is minus j minus one dj, this is equivalent to say that dc d of omega n minus one is equal to zero. Okay, and so you are done because D and D C anti-commute. So D star theta is zero, if and only if D D C of omega n minus one is zero, okay? So the Godushan condition is equivalent to say that the leaf form is co-closed thanks to this very easy computation, okay? So why I'm talking about uh, Godushan matrix? Because we have this very famous theorem due to Godushan this is a, a fundamental theorem in complex Hermitian geometry that is the following. So let MJ, so suppose that MJ is an N dimensional, N is the complex dimension, okay? N dimensional compact complex manifold with N greater than one. Then, any conformal class of any given Hermitian metric unique up to multiplication. Sorry, uh, any conformal class of any given Hermitian metric, sorry, uh, contains I go to Sean Matic. Okay, so that's the point. And this good Sean Matic is in fact unique up to multiplication with positive constant. Okay, so what this theorem is saying is that you picked uh, an arbitrary Hermitian metric. 
whatever, okay, an arbitrary emission metric, then in the conformal class of this metric, there exists a Godushon metric. And this Godushon metric is unique up to multiplication with positive constant in the conformal class, okay? So um, what this theorem is saying, in fact, is that Godushon metrics always exist. So they, in fact, exist in every conformal class. So the Godushon result is stronger than that. But in particular, so in particular, it follows that Godushon metrics always exist. So they exist on every compact complex manifold. Okay, so every compact complex manifold has an emission metric whose leaf form is co-closed. So, and why am I telling you this? Because as a corollary, if you take n equal to the Godushan condition, DDC omega n minus one being zero, so this is the Godushan condition, it's equivalent to say if omega is equal to, to DDC omega equals zero. But this is the SKT condition. These are SKT matrix. So what, what does it mean? It means that SKT matrix exists on every compact complex surface. Okay, so in dimension two, the Godushan condition is equivalent to the SKT condition, so they always exist. So for this reason, it is um, it's interesting to study SKT matrix in higher dimension, right? So on complex manifold of dimension starting from uh, three and higher, right? Because in dimension two, they always exist. So now I want to construct so to uh, an explicit example of a compact complex manifold of dimension complex dimension three that admits um, an SKT metric. And it's, but, yeah, it will be a simply connected example. And the construction I'm going to present is, is a construction um, that I did with, uh, sorry, with uh, Tomassini, with Adriano Tomassini in 2017. Okay, so consider the special unitary group as U2 given by matrices two by two with complex entries such that A times the, com the conjugate, the transpose conjugate is equal to the identity, right? And also I want the special group. So the determinant of the matrix has to be one, okay? So in fact, so if you write the matrix A has A, B, C, D, and imposing, so if you impose that the lines have norm one, right? So because it's a unitary matrix, so say A is modulo of A square, that's modulo of B square is one. And also for the second line, we have the same. And also, um, the lines are orthogonal, right? So we have A C conjugate plus B C conjugate equals zero because they have to be orthogonal. And also we have the last condition, the determinant of the matrix, the matrix is equal one, right? So A D minus B C is equal one. What you get, so you can do this as an exercise, what you get, is that SU2 is given by those matrices that have this form. So A minus B conjugate, B A conjugate with A B complex numbers, of course, uh, sorry, such that modulo of A squared plus the modulo of B squared is equal one. Okay. So in fact, so the matrices in this group have this form. So what does it mean, this condition? It means that we are on a sphere. So as you true, is in fact diffeomorphic to S3. 
So a three as the, as the structure of a Lie group. Okay. And the Lie algebra. is given by uh, matrices two by two, such that A plus the transpose conjugate of A is trivial and they are traceless. Yeah. So in particular, so this is the Lie algebra. So in particular, SU2 is generated as an R as a R vector space by these elements. So E1 is I zero zero minus I, E2 is zero one minus one zero, E3 is uh, zero I, I zero. Okay, so, um, Okay, so we have this, and so we have the following commutation relations. So the commutation relations, you can check the follow immediately from this. They are that the bracket of E1, E2 is equal to two times E3. The Lie bracket of E1, E3 is equal to minus two E2, and the Lie bracket of E2, E3 is equal to two times E1. Okay, so we have this uh, commutation relations and we call that for one forms on the algebras, we have that the differential of an one form on element XY is given, to, is given by minus alpha apply to the commutator of X and Y. Okay, so this means that if E1, E2, E3 with upper indices denotes the dual coframe of uh, E1, E2, E3, Okay, so I'm denoting this way the dual coframe. You can check that for, from the commutation relations that we have here for the Lie algebra, we have that the differential of E1 is equal to minus two E2 wedge E3. The differential of E2 is equal to two E1 wedge E3. And the differential of E3 is minus two E1 wedge E2. Okay, so we have this. So what do we do now? So now we consider the following manifold. We consider, let's say X as three times S3. Or if you want, thanks to this construction is S2 times, sorry, SU2 times SU2. Okay, so the manifold where we are going to construct our uh, complex structure first and Hermitian metric uh, later um, is S3 times S3, okay? So this is our manifold. So, so let E1, E2, E3 be a basis of the first copy of the algebra C2. And for the second, Sorry. For the second copy, we take F1, F2, F3, okay? So this is the second copy, the basis for the second copy of SC2, okay? So define the following complex structure. The complex structure J on X, in this way, we say that J of E1 is equal to E2, J of F1 is equal to F2. So we are sending E1 on E2 in the first copy, F1, F2 in the second copy, and then 
we send E3 to F3. And then impose, of course, that J squares to minus the identity. Okay. So we define a complex structure in this way. And it turns out that J is related to the Calabi Ekman uh, standard complex structure on a street um, times a street. And a complex co frame of one zero forms. is given by the following. Define P1 as E1 plus I E2. P2 is F1 plus I F2. And P3 is E3 plus I F3. So according to this definition of J, these are one zero forms. And so what we have is that we find that the complex structure equation, sorry, structure equations become the following. So if you apply the differential to P1, it's, you see, is the differential of E1 plus I, the differential of E2 because of you know, linearity. And then you use the structure equation that are here, in order to understand what is the differential of P1, okay? And it turns out, you can check that this is equal to I phi one wedge phi three plus I phi one wedge phi bar three. The differential of T phi two is phi two wedge phi three minus phi two wedge phi bar three. And the differential of phi three is I Phi one wedge phi bar one plus phi two wedge phi bar two. In particular, one can check, I mean, you can check this also using the, the Mihenoi tensor, but you can also use this structure equation to understand that in particular, J is integrable is an integrable complex structure. Because above, if, if you see, I just impose the fact that J squared is minus identity. A priori, you don't know whether your J in fact defines a complex structure, but you can check this from here because when you compute the differential, there are no extra terms of type zero two. So if you don't have extra terms of type zero two, it means that it's an equivalent integrability condition. Okay. Okay, so now fix the Hermitian metric. So we have a complex structure. So we fix the Hermitian metric omega on S3 times S3 with complex structure J, and it is defined by I over two and the sum of Pj wedge P bar J. Okay, so this is a real positive one one form. Okay, it's the, it is the standard one that you can construct on this manifold. And I would like to give you this as an exercise. Check that del del bar of omega is equal to zero. Okay, and how can you do that? Well, this is the expression of omega, and then you have to do to use this uh, differential. Because you see, for instance, this is the del of phi one, and this is the del bar of phi one. Okay, and similarly, this is the del of phi two, and this is the del bar of phi two with the minus also. And here, this is the part of, of this is, uh, this has degree um, one, one. So this is the del bar of C3, okay? So you can use this to compute the fact this and show that del del bar of omega is zero, which means that, this means that S3 times S3, J omega is a compact 
SKT manifold of complex dimension uh, three. Um, just a remark. Uh, so the only products of odd spheres, so of the type S2, S2P uh, plus one times S2Q plus one with um, Talabi Ekman complex structure. Okay, I will not stress on this, but on products of odd sphere, there is a, a natural way to construct complex structure, and this was due, is due to Calabi Ekman. So, on products of odd spheres, um, so sorry, um, the only products of odd spheres uh, admitting SKT matrix are S1 times S1. S1 times S3 and S3 times S3. So actually the example that I just showed you um, is a very special example because the only products where you can have a SKT matrix uh, for odd spheres are these. So the first one, S1 times S1 is the torus, it's scalar. S1 times S3 is the Hopf surface So it's a surface, so SKT, so SKT equals Gudushan, right? Gudushan. SKT matrix always exists in this case. And then the other product of odd sphere you have is S3 times S3. And this follows from a result of Cavalcanti. So let me mention this uh, briefly. So by Cavalcanti, so this is a result of Cavalcanti, a compact SKT manifold with H to N del bar. So the Dolbo cohomology of B degree to one and the Dolbo cohomology of B degree three zero is trivial. Where, let me recall that the Dolbo cohomology is a bigraded cohomology that you can define on the manifold using the operator del bar. And it's the quotient of del bar closed forms over del bar exact forms. So it's the kernel of del bar over the image of del bar. And it's well defined because the del bar operator is a differential operator that squares to zero. So if you have an SKT manifold with this special del bar homology, then also admits, admits a symplectic structure. But by a result of Borel, the Dolbo homology of Calabi Ekman manifold is known. Okay, so by Borel, let's say the hypothesis of this result of Cavalcanti, uh, so for S2P plus one times S2Q plus one, except for these three cases over here, above here, so the hypotheses are satisfied. But H2, the RAM of these manifolds, is trivial. Okay, so there are no symplectic structures. In particular, this is also saying that this, the products of spheres cannot be killer. Okay, because they cannot admit any symplectic structure. So for this reason, except for those three special cases, products of odd sphere cannot admit any uh, SKT metric. Okay, because of this result of Cavalcanti. And uh, so the example we constructed, constructed is, a, is a very special one. So on the same, uh, with the same idea, you can ask, okay, so 
If you have a metric on a manifold, just like in the example before, you can check whether it's uh, SKT. You know, you compute the delta bar of omega, you can check if it's SKT. But the problem is uh, how can I understand whether a complex manifold admit an SKT metric? You, you, we want, let's say, obstruction. So this is, for instance, a good one. The one by Cavalcanti allows to understand uh, the fact that odd spheres, the products of odd spheres in general do not under, um, admit SKT metrics. So the question is, there are other obstructions. So are there obstructions to the existence of SKT metric? So I will probably conclude by saying a few words about this. Um, so uh, in general, we have characterizations in terms of currents. So uh, what is the space of currents? So the space of currents Of uh, dimension P, P or B degree N minus P, N minus P is the space. Let me call this B prime N minus P, N minus P for the B degree or B prime P, P for the B dimension is the topological dual of PP, for, PP forms on the manifold with compact support. Okay, so this stands for the topological dual. Okay, and um, a current P of B dimension P, P is said to be real if it's a topological dual, so a, a current T acts on forms, and so T of phi is equal to T of P bar for every phi P, P form with compact support. And T is positive if T of, uh, let's say, uh, E to the power P squared over to P, two to the power P of phi one wedge, wedge phi P wedge, phi bar one wedge, wedge phi bar P is non-negative for every Phi i, so these are forms of B degree one zero with compact support. So a current is positive if it satisfies this condition. Okay, I will not stress much on this condition of positivity, but if you are interested, you can uh, have as a reference uh, the, paper, the sorry the book of um, De Mai. That is a good reference. Okay, so why I'm talking about currents because. They are the dual of forms, and they are useful in order to understand when, when, whenever we have um, special Hermitian metrics on complex manifolds. So this result is due to a GD, and this is similar to a result that is known for Keller metrics. So the, this result is the following. So M is a, for, a, for us is a compact complex manifold of complex dimension N. So a compact complex manifold M is SKT if and only if M carries no non-zero current T of B degree N minus one, N minus one, such that 
or if you want to be dimension one one, such that T is positive and T is delta bar exact. And this is the if and only if. So you have an SKT metric. If and only if there are no currents with this property. So there is a I mean, current of B degree n minus one and minus one that are positive and delta bar exact. So why is this, how this result is useful? Because um, let's say, um, how do we use it, this? Uh, so using this result, we are able to understand when a manifold does not admit any SKT metric. How just exhibiting a current with the previous properties. Because if you show that there is a current that has the properties that are written here, then you know that your manifold does not admit any SKT metric, okay? And in fact, this result has been used. So, and here I conclude. So this result has been used in several occasions, uh, for instance, uh, to show, so for instance, to show the following. This theorem is due to Fino Tomassini in 2009, is that the existence of SKT matrix is not stable under small deformations of the complex structures. What does it mean? It means that in general, you start with a compact complex manifold, MJ0. And suppose that here you have, there exists omega SKT. Then what you do, you want to take, to take the same manifold M is fixed, but then you consider uh, a deformation of this structure. You can think of it as a holomorphic family of complex structure depending on a parameter T. So here the differential structure is fixed, but you are moving the complex structure, okay? Moving a little bit. So these are small deformations, okay? So T is varying in a, let's say a small neighbor if you want of the origin in the, on the complex plane, for instance, okay? So you ask whether, you know, this new, complex manifolds, because these are new complex manifolds, again, admit SKT matrix, okay? You start with something that admit an SKT matrix, and then you construct a new complex manifold with the same underlying differentiable structure, and you want to understand whether you have SKT matrix. In general, these manifolds, in general, they are not SKT, okay? And this was shown on specific examples by Fino Tomassini on the Vazawa manifold. And similarly with Tomassini, we showed this on in 2017, on the example we showed before as three times as three, we showed that we started with the complex manifold we saw before that is SKT, we constructed a deformation and we showed that that deformation does not admit any SKT matrix. And how we do that? Using this proposition of GD. I mean, we exhibit a current 
with this property. So that's uh, why this proposition is very useful, okay? Because it allows to understand whether your, your manifold admit SKT matrix um, or not. Okay, so yeah, I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Thank All right. Uh, I have a small question I maybe missed. Uh, by bismuth connection, you mean, I think, the complex compatible connection, right? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a phi connection that is, uh, I mean, the, um, sorry, the complex structure is parallel with respect to the to this connection, exactly. Okay. Okay, all right. Exactly. I mean, these Hermitian connection are, let me see, they are preserving, sorry, yeah, the whole Hermitian structure, both the metric and the complex structure. I see, yeah. all right. So it's the torsion that, the ter at this point, is the torsion that determines what which connection you are choosing, essentially. Okay, then it's a new fancy name for the classical uh, complex connection. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. Um...